stage. So would you please welcome Vehicle Line Director Kevin Stride, Director of Connected Car, Peter Burke, and the Chief Engineer, David Dealey. So Kevin, set the scene for us. How do you take a next generation design like Villar and actually get it onto the road? Well, the first critical thing, and I think Massimo and his colleagues said it just now, uh, we had a vision at the beginning where we needed to share that design vision with all of our engineering team. And uh, we took them on a journey, so they bought into that vision, and they shared the passion that we have in our, in our company to deliver that. So we didn't dilute that design vision any step in the way and use innovation and advanced engineering techniques to deliver that promise. But we think at Jack and Land Rover with the deep understanding of engineering that the design team has, which Jerry referred to earlier, that we can work as a team uniquely to deliver these amazing designs. Okay, so let's hear more about it then. And I'm going to start with technology, which makes such a very clear statement of intent in the Villar and the infotainment system, which is called Touch Pro Duo. Now, fortunately, Peter Burke is the man to explain all about it. Peter, we've talked before about infotainment, and many people are familiar with the Touch Pro. What is Touch Pro Duo? Sure, so Touch Pro Duo is our next generation of our infotainment interface. And there's two key principles that we like to focus on here. First was the reduction of the switches within the vehicle, and secondly, customization. And we've created a completely new digital design with the introduction of our twin high definition touchscreens. And this has all been centered around the driver and also our passengers. So it sounds a bit like you've got a digital butler. Well, oh, yes, it kind of learns from you and anticipates your needs and serves you, serves you exactly what you want when you need it, just like a digital butler would do. And it takes the stress of your daily routine and drive away. So how did you go about it and where did the original idea come from? So we've taken a lot of inspiration and learnings from uh, premium, high-quality uh, consumer electronics and we've used an optically bonded technology on the touchscreen to give that really nice, clean and precise finish. And then we've continued to look at, you know, smartphone style uh, user controls, which has replaced traditional controls that you would have. And with the latest software, we've added more functionality, but without adding more buttons, and obviously we keep on reducing distraction. This gives us that clean, premium finish. Now, more features certainly sounds good, but how do you actually decide what information the driver sees and when? Well, everything is designed to put all the information um, available when you actually need it. So all of your favourite features are available in the top screen, which you can customise, and then the, the screen also can power and adjust to give you that optimal visibility. So what goes in the lower screen? So the lower screen is for the features that are easy intuitive to use, like your climate control settings. And we've got these two magic rotaries that actually float on top of the surface and actually are reconfigurable, and they're based upon the menu and the function you're in. There's no moving images or animations um, to give you that crisp clarity. And how did you actually decide on this? Well, we've done extensive user trials in China, in Europe and in America to develop the actual interface. And this has been done actually with inside the vehicle and it's been tailored to give that right in-car experience. And so what traditional switches and buttons has the TouchPro Duo system actually been able to get rid of? Well, more or less all of them. Um, the climate control and audio buttons have been replaced by the touchscreen and the rotaries that we've got. And TouchPro Duo also introduces our new train response into the lower screen. It removes the need for a dedicated controller. It's easy to use. You can simply use a touchscreen or the rotary to select the mode that you need. And how does that improve the experience? Well, I guess it was, it, the key thing was to, to get the sophisticated graphics and the high definition images and giving that intuitive style of interface. It creates that more theatre-like experience for the driver and our passengers. And when you're using the latest train response system, you've made it, made it more intuitive because you can kind of see the type of train like mud and ruts on the display. Now, it's all very well to put so much onto the screens, but I know one of the biggest problems a lot of people have is actually finding it all. So how have you addressed that? Well, the key thing is to making sure you can find what you want and when you need it. And we've done some real detailed um, development here to reduce the number of steps you need to find a particular menu, and obviously with the use of smart controls. Okay, so smart controls. How smart is smart? Well, um, this is something we call dual tasking. And what you can do is you can have things like your media or telephone um, settings available on the lower screen, and I can have all my navigation aspects on the top. This allows me to manage my music and see where I'm going without having to change any menu. And did you take this approach when you were actually looking at the whole car? 
Pretty much, yes. We've even bought that to the actual steering wheel controls. They're now capacitive, so I can glide my thumb across to increase or decrease the volume, and then we've got intelligent illumination. So it's a green button to answer a call, and then while I'm in the call, it turns into a red icon for me to finish the phone call. Okay, so you've clearly considered the interface very carefully, but how does the technology actually support the driver? Well, in fact, there are three main technologies, Peter, and I'm going to start with the HD instrument display. Sure. So our high-definition uh, virtual instruments is our 12.3-inch uh, uh, display that gives us that brighter and crisper graphics. And it also allows now four different configurations with the choice of map views and the dials. We also can have the full-width navigation available, and then it's, we've we'll put that all together with our smoother, fluid-like graphics. And what about head-up display next? Well, this has got our next generation full color TFT head up display. And the pieces I like is now I can keep my eyes on the road, see what track or radio station I'm listening to. And then when I do come to a complex intersection, I can get a picture of a mini map so I can clearly uh, see where I need to head off on my destination. And that takes us into the connected navigation. Yeah, pretty much. So this has got our latest release on our connected navigation to give those fast um, responses. And again, it continues to use a tablet-style interface where you can pinch and zoom and use a swipe gestures on the touchscreen. OK, and what else can we expect in this, this glorious interior? Well, you can also control things like your ambient lighting. We've got a tricolor LED technology that allows you to choose from up to 10 different hues via the actual touchscreen. And then, for the driver and all our occupants, we've got a 4G Wi-Fi hotspot to connect for up to 8 devices four USB ports and four charging sockets, so you make sure everything's topped up before you, before you leave. And then we've got 60 gigabytes of onboard storage, and it's all connected through our ultra-pass Ethernet technology. Now, as you were saying, we're also reliant now on our smartphones. How does this allow remote interaction? Well, as you said, smartphones are part of our life, as well as our smart watches now. You can actually lock or unlock your vehicle from the comfort of your own home. You can even control the climate control. So heat up the car on a cold winter's morning. And then, maybe while you're having your breakfast, you can use your smartphone to set the destination before you head off. And all this experience has been put together to make sure that we get that unmistakable Range Rover uh, finish. Thank you very much, Peter. Now, Kevin, I'm going to come back to you. Can you tell us where technology has enabled the exterior of the design in the villa? Sure, I can give two great examples. We've talked about our obsession with the flush deployable door handles already, so I won't go into that too much. It also does actually help the aerodynamic drag as well, which is great news. The other area which is very obvious from the exterior is the premium lighting technology. Uh, we've got all-round LED lighting, front and rear, on all variants of Villar. Um, it's actually enabled a really slimline, compact package to give that concept car-like graphic that we fought so hard from from day <coughs> one. We've, um, we've, using those LEDs, it's um, our first use of adaptive matrix LED technology, uh, which is great for performance and better for visibility and safety. And there are some key features with this sort of lighting technology. Indeed, the adaptive driving beam technology, it senses oncoming traffic and tailors the beam to actually shadow those cars to avoid glare, whilst providing full beam coverage everywhere else. It's a phenomenal experience and, and adds to the confidence of the driver. I mean, we were talking about laser beams. Oh, well. indeed. And the big news, laser high beams, our first use, doubles the range of the full beam experience, over 550 metres. Many people would think using lasers and headlights is risky. Yeah, not in this case. So we've obviously put controls in where the car actually decides when it's the right and safe, appropriate time to utilise them. So you need to be in a certain road condition, it's looking for oncoming traffic, um, and you also need to be above certain speed thresholds typically 60, 65 kilometers per hour. Okay then, so the interior and lighting technology certainly help um, with that design <laughs> appeal and the experience when you're behind the wheel. But of course the question is, how does the Velar actually drive? Let's bring back Dave here, the chief engineer, to tell us. Dave, given that this is a, a design that is very aesthetic and very technology-led, <coughs> is how it drives even important? Of course, how it drives is important. It's a Range Rover and how it drives is absolutely critical. The Land Rover is all about breadth of capability. The emphasis is different depending on whether it's a Range Rover, a Discovery or a Defender. The Range Rover is all about refinement in any situation. So what have you done then to make sure that this car actually drives like a Range Rover? As a mid-sized SUV, it's got less inertia. It's got an efficient four and six cylinder engines that give refined performance. It's lighter and more agile 
and we've developed firmer roll control. It's intentionally sportier attitude than the full-size Range Rover, but it's a real major focus on refinement. So what are the key ingredients then? The whole basis of the car is our aluminium intensive architecture. So for 80% aluminium, an aluminium roof and an aluminium hood. We've got great expertise in aluminium. It enables us to deliver the clean, precise lines that the designers require and all the curvatures and contours. But it also gives us outstanding refinement and performance. We've got aluminium suspension as well. Double wishbone at the front and integral rear link as well. And what does this mean for the customer? It gives them a fantastic drive. The reduced weight, it's got, AI, it's got added stiffness and it gives our development team fantastic basis to deliver the perfect balance between driving precision, refinement and costing ride. The air suspension adds to this, it's the ultimate ride, ride refinement, it's got capability, it's also elegant arrival, where the car lowers by 40 millimetres when you open the door to make it easy to get out or get in. Now we heard from Peter earlier on about how the terrain response has been reimagined with the controls inside the cabin, but you've also reimagined the, the way that the all-wheel drive is actually delivered. So the Bell RRs are all your driver standard, but this time, for the first time on a Land Rover, we've got Intelligent Driveline Dynamics, or IDD. It's a seamless system that's in-house developed for a torque on demand system. It's got incredible flex flexibility. It can deliver all of the torque to the rear axle if necessary for the optimum efficiency or refinement. And so how quickly then does it automatically transfer the torque? Really quickly. Under 165 milliseconds, it can switch all the torque to the front, or it can transfer it to whichever wheel it needs for optimum traction. It's also got an active rear differential to give more control across axle, delivering the torque, and also greater on, this aids greater on-road traction and confidence exiting corners, and it's got, it also benefits all-terrain performance. Okay, start off with describing what this therefore means on the road. On the road, the IDD gives great traction, distributing the torque. So your acceleration out of the corner when you're applying the throttle gives you great confidence as you exit it. We've also got torque vectoring. So as you enter a corner, it gives you that initial bite, that initial turning, a great confidence of grip as you go into a corner. The electronic uh, di differential adds to this composure. We've got configurable, di configurable dynamics for the first time on a Land Rover as well. And it allows you to adjust the car the way you want it. And it's more focused and it gives a greater differential between the standard and the dynamic mode. On top of this, we've got adaptive damping, which is always taking the driver and the road inputs so you have the optimum ride at all times. And what about when you take it off the road? So off-road, it's all about all-terrain capability. It remains on this vehicle as every Land Rover. The active diff and the IDD give the ability to direct the torque to the right wheel and give greater individual wheel control so that you have grip and momentum in whatever conditions you're in. The air suspension as well, it gives you fantastic ground clearance, raising by 48 millimetres up to 251 in total, and gives a weighting depth of 650 millimetres. Plus it's got Land Rover's terrain response, pioneering technology, enabling, enabling legendary capability. It's standard on all of our models. Okay, so at the beginning you also talked slightly about the efficient engines. Tell us the story there. We have six engine options globally. There's four four-cylinder engines and two V6s. There's three diesels and three petrols. An engine for every customer's needs. It's the first time we've got a four-cylinder ingenium petrol engine. There's one version at launch and there's a 300 PS coming later in the year. It's an all aluminium construction using clean, efficient technologies. The ingenium diesel and petrol engines are designed, developed and manufactured in-house by Jaguar Land Rover in the UK. And finally, tell us a bit about the aerodynamics. The aerodynamics, we've worked incredibly hard on this with the design team in the overall shape and the details that we've delivered as well. At the front, there's the air scarf that um, goes into the wheel arch, there's the flush door handles that we've talked about earlier, and there's the um, ducted spoiler as well at the back of the car. And this gives us the most aerodynamic Range Rover ever with a CD of only 0.32. The air suspension helps as well, lowers the car by 10 millimetres above 105 miles, uh, kilometres an hour, optimising the aero performance. Overall, it's a fantastic recipe for stability, composure and refinement.
thanks a lot, though. Kevin, I just want to now come back to you um, to wrap things up by talking to us about the interior space, because alongside all the design and the technology, you've created some real practicality. How? Well, the first thing, and, and Massimo referred to it earlier, we've maximised the wheelbase within the footprint of the car. So we've got a wheelbase that's just under three metres in length, but in a vehicle that's under five metres. Um, that's been great for the proportions of the car, but having those widely spaced wheels gives lots of room for the occupants, both in the front and the rear. So we've got very generous leering in the back. Uh, we've also got very, perhaps surprising air room in that, very, very good indeed even with that sweeping roof on, because of the detail we've gone through to get those proportions right. We've also spaced the rear occupants to precisely the area we want you to take advantage of that space and visibility to get that sanctuary feeling from just where you're sitting and all the materials and the surfaces around you. And I think there's reclining seats in the rear. And we also have powered reclining rear seats just to add to the comfort. And then tell us about weekends away and you want to take some luggage. Um, it has an enormously generous um, luggage space. You spend a lot of time looking at all of those large objects you might want if you have a family or an active life lifestyle. So 673 litres. And indeed, when you fold the three rear seats down, the load space is over 1.8 litres long. Extremely practical. And all of that delivered with an incredibly breathtaking design. Well, it sounds like you've thought of everything. Thank you very much, Kevin, and also to David and Peter.